I know, I know. If you can stand up, I want to present a new father, a husband. I want to present an author. I want to present a musician. And I want to present the pastor of Fuel Station, who will be installed on the 25th. Pastor Nay, y'all put your hands to him and say, preach, man of God. Preach, man of God. <laughs> I love my brother in the Lord. <laughs> God bless. Thank you, my sister Lachey. Wow. I, I, when she was saying all that, I was looking around like, who is this guy? She talking about? <laughs> it's so good to see everybody here. How are you guys doing today? I tell you, we serve such an amazing God. And um, please have a seat. Uh, I'm so excited to be here with my family today. Um, please pray, pray for me. This has been, um, March has, um, March has been an amazing a month in my life for the last few years. Every major event that happened in my life happened in the month of March for some reason. And um, this today was the day, March 12th was the day I met my wife um, on a missions trip. And it was the most divine thing. And what's crazy is, um, you know, we I preached last night. Then um, I, you know, I was asked, for um, our amazing brother and sister, Pastor Al, to speak this morning. And then I have to speak at an 1130. So y'all pray for me. And then the clock went forward. <laughs> I said, Lord, what a weekend. So and then I just left the nine o'clock service. So that's why y'all see me, you know. So please, when I say pray for me, pray my strength. My wife would have loved to be here with us. So um, if you do see that around 1110, uh, 1115 that I leave out is because I have another service to go to, but I would definitely want to make sure I give you what God is saying today. Uh, so first I want to say, uh, just, could you do me one favor? Just look at somebody who's, uh, who look better than you and say, it's good to see you. <laughs> Some of y'all didn't turn. Some of y'all didn't turn. I was watching. You're like, I know nobody looked better than me. I ain't turned. <laughs> Some of y'all put out a mirror set. <laughs> it's good to see. <laughs> but it's, I, 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 I'm so excited. I believe that um, every time I'm asked to share, I'm, I'm at the place of my life. Um, and thank you to uh, Lachey for reminding me on March 25th um, here at the church. Um, definitely welcome my family, Spirit of Truth, to please join me uh, for the installation, uh, uh, the pastor installation. My bishop will have. And... It's going to be at 11 a.m., so it's going to be early if you're not doing anything. Um, most likely we'll be in the large sanctuary because of the magnitude of people who may be coming. So, But if I saw y'all, I may, I may get happy. So just want to throw that out there. If you know, So that's March 25th, 11 o'clock. Um, it would be a great opportunity. It's a once-in-a-lifetime thing. Uh, me and my wife is humbled and honored. We don't take it for granted because it is a calling. And um, I tell you, it's... I needed God to really speak. I needed him to speak. So when the when the word of the Lord began to come to me through many confirmations, my spiritual father, my bishop sister, I, you talk about fasting and praying because I'm like, because, you know, I've, I grew up most of my life knowing pastors. Most of my friends are pastors and I've seen what they was going through. And I'm like, mm -mm, no, Lord, I'm good. I, I want to be effective, but not a pastor. <laughs> and so when the time came and he knocked on my door. I had to make a decision, and I said, if I really love you, if I really love you, Lord, I'm going to be obedient. I can't say I love you and then tell you what I'm going to do. My form of love is in obedience to the king, and the king says, you're summoned. And y'all know that. Y'all know when y'all get those letters to go down to the court? <laughs> you're summoned. And you're like, I didn't ask for this. Well, they, didn't, they don't care. You better be sitting up there at the jury when they summon you. And this is where, when the king asks, you just have to say yes. And I've learned when you say yes, there is things on the other side of that yes that you cannot imagine that God is going to do for you. There are certain blessings you won't see until you say yes. I'm telling you right now, I, there's been times, uh, Lord, before I said yes. I pray for things and didn't see it happen. And then after the yes, Brother Rob, stuff, some stuff I didn't pray and I started seeing it. 
And I'm like, this don't make sense. I'm praying for God to bless me and do this. And he's like, well, why would I bless you for you to do nothing? <laughs> why would I give you something for you not to do what I'm calling you to do? But if you do what I call you to do, I'm going to give you everything you need to do it. So if I ask uh, Sister Cheryl to go to the store for me, if I say, Cheryl, can you go to the store for me? She don't have to worry about the money. She, all she got to do is say yes. And because she's going for me, I supply. So you got to see it from that way. So I encourage everybody here to do what God called you to do. So let me tell you real quick what God has given us tonight. I mean, not tonight. I see y'all pray for me because I still think it is last night. <laughs> uh, Second Timothy chapter four. I got to give you this because um, one of my assignments as a, a teacher of God's word is to remind people about eternity. Um, I'm very passionate about it. I don't know. I used to never used to be like that. But once I understood that this is one of my assignments is because I'm seeing too many funerals. I'm seeing too many people who think they got time and you don't have as much time as you think. And so God kept, kept you here for a purpose. And that's what we want to figure out. What is it I'm supposed to be doing before your expiration date? We say this at Fuel Station Church. You have an uh, invisible expiration date. The scary thing is you don't know when that day is. <laughs> Last night, a few people went to sleep, didn't know that that was their expiration date. Because of this truth, we need to get busy with purpose for Jesus' kingdom. Amen. So let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 4, and I'm going to read verses 1 through verse 8 real quick. Um, it says this. I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Verse two, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, rebuke, reprove, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Verse three, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Look at verse four. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. There's a time coming where people ain't going to want to hear the truth and shall be turned into fables, stories. Verse five, but watch in all things, endure affliction, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Verse six, for I am now ready to be offered in the time of my departure is at hand. Look at verse seven, for I have fought a good fight. I finished my course. Everybody say my course. my course. I have kept the faith in verse eight. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them that love his appearance. And I want to talk today about my course, because there is a course. Each person in this room was put here to accomplish. Now, the only thing about this, I got to take you to one of my favorite scriptures, which is Ecclesiastes chapter three. So many of you know this scripture, but I just need you. I'm just going to read it so you can really hear it clear, because this is where um, I'm going to just spend the next 10 minutes just to share with you. Verse one of Ecclesiastes chapter three says to everything. Everybody say thing. There is a season, a time and a purpose under heaven. So these are the three things we're going to talk about. Season, time, and purpose. Let's say that again. Season, time, purpose. One more time. Season, time, purpose. For everything under heaven. That's humans, objects, food, Everything under heaven has a season, a time, and a purpose. This is why we got to get busy because what the devil has been doing is making us blinded from your season, your time, and your purpose. And you want to know why he's doing that? Because he knows you are about to expire. And if you expire without doing your purpose... <laughs> you see what's happening? So he don't care. The devil don't care that we go to church, Gabby. You know what he's caring about? 
He's caring long as I don't find my purpose. So that's why he, the one thing I learned about the devil, uh, Brother Rob, he'll actually drive you to church. Long as I don't do what I was called to do, he don't care. So let me show you this in, a, in something that you can understand. Okay, in my hand, I'm holding uh, a AAA battery. This wonderful AAA battery was in my dresser. Um, I need these batteries to use for uh, my remote control at the house. And, um, you know, yeah. So the thing was, one day, I bought this battery. And when I put it in the remote control, guess what? Thankfully. I was able to turn my TV on, Brother Sherman. I'm just turning it on and it just everything was working. And then one day my wife came to me. She was like, babe, the TV won't turn on. And I'm like, well, did you hit all the right buttons? She was like, yeah, I've been hitting the buttons. For some reason, this thing is working on. So I said, okay, let me check the battery. So I opened it up, took this particular battery out, put a new one in, and it worked. And then it hit me. This battery had a season a time, and a purpose. Somebody tell me what was the purpose for that battery? To make the remote work. You see how simple it is? For, you see how it's easy for us to know what a battery should do? But when it comes to us, I, 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 uh, I, I'm I, supposed to just lift my hands, I think? <laughs> so watch this. Once it served its purpose, and the funny thing about, the funny thing about this battery it gave me no indication that it was about to die. It was dying and I didn't even know it. The season was expiring and I didn't even know it. We are expiring and we don't even know it. <laughs> so what I've learned is, ah, I got to make sure I understand my seasons, my time and my purpose because I ain't gonna be here long. So I got, so, so now I get it. Now I understand what Paul was saying. He says, my departure is at hand. He was like, my season is about up. And he says, and I have finished my course, meaning I have became the battery. I made that remote work while I was here. He said, but now my battery about to die. And my time is about up. And he says, but watch this. Because I was a good battery, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. So he was trying to tell Timothy, make sure you do your work, do your thing, because you could be existing. But if you don't be the battery, when your time expire, you ain't get no crown of righteousness. That only come to people who do what they were called to do here. Mm -mm -mm. So just the other day, um, we, you know, I, I get a call from someone who um, said that someone, you know, just passed away. And when this person passed away, I can tell you right now, everything in my gut, I don't know the person, but everything in my gut said that that person did not wake up that day saying, this is the day of my departure. We all heard about our amazing brother, the fireman, who just lost his life. Do y'all think he woke up that day saying, putting on his fire outfit saying, this is the day? He didn't even think that. We don't even think it. We... Y'all remember we had the earthquake a couple of weeks ago? Who in here expected that? <laughs> and at the same time, they had one in Turkey. Or, um, yeah, was that Turkey? Same time. And what happened over there, there were, what, 40, 50,000 people who died who went to sleep the night before saying, I'm going to plan a vacation this summer. We're going to go to the mall and closed their eyes and didn't know the season expired. I got it. I got it. 
That's why this thing is so serious about purpose. Because watch this, the person who is doing their, doing their job really don't care when their season expire. They're actually excited because they know the moment I leave here, absent from the body is present with the Lord. So I'm not afraid of death when I'm doing my assignment. I'm only afraid to die when I'm sure I'm not being the battery. Those are the people who can't sleep. Those are the people who feel restless. Those are the people who feel anxious. It's like, why don't, I don't, man, you know, so you, so yes, we got to go to all type of things to calm these nerves because something in us is saying, I'm not doing what I'm here to do. Y'all looking at a guy back in the day used to be addicted to a lot of stuff, but guess what? I had three year depression when I went, when I was 17 years old and you want to know why I was depressed? Cause I didn't graduate from high school. I failed by one point. I don't know if I told y'all that story. I was a class clown, and, and, and I get to the day, and I get the phone call. And they said, excuse me, Mr. Salter, you don't have to come to rehearsal. And I thought she was joking. So I'm like, uh, okay, all right, okay, stop playing this prank. She said, yeah, you're, you're not going to be walking across the stage. And I said, what are you talking about? I know I passed. She said, unfortunately, you failed English and you got a 64 and I needed a 65. Oh, my God. True story. And I said, you mean to tell me y'all can't just work some numbers out here and just slide a one point on my side? And then it hit me. The teacher, my English teacher, was the teacher that I was giving the most problems to all year. <laughs> and I just, all I saw was that teacher smiling at her desk, saying, I got you now, Mr. Salter. And that thing sent me into depression, and I didn't graduate with all my friends. And, and the reason why I was depressed, because somebody told me when I was young, without a high school diploma, you ain't going to be nothing. You ain't going to do this. So when I didn't get that diploma, I believed those words. And depression hit me, because I'm like, I don't have purpose no more. So I went three years completely messed up, and then at age 20, someone named Jesus gave me a glimpse of my battery. I never played an instrument, never played, and I sat there, and I, now I learned to play all these instruments taught over 2,000 students because the one who made the battery told me I was a battery. It wasn't the diploma. So all everyone need is a revelation of your purpose, not degrees and doctrine. I know we think that's what's going to make you valuable, but it's you just knowing that you're a battery. Do you know that the apple tree that is, that is producing apples is more successful than most people who's in college? <laughs> because they're producing the fruit that why they were here. So we're being out, outlived by trees. <laughs> we go into jobs that we hate. Waking up every morning, oh God. Driving to work, knowing that you spoke there's something else and knowing there's a battery and you driving to work. <sighs> and so what happened was, when I got the understanding that I am a battery, I said, okay, I gave my life to Jesus Christ. My life changed. So that was the first step. I accepted him as my Lord and Savior. But then when I accepted him as my Lord and Savior, he says, now you're mine. I need to show you why I saved you. Because I am the king. And I save people to do certain things in my kingdom. Uh-oh. There's a role you play in this big kingdom project. So I'm going to give you gifts according to what I want you to do in this kingdom. You don't get the gifts by yourself. He gives them as he will. So watch this. So when he gives you the gift, he says, now produce with what I gave you. Now, why is he telling you to produce with what he gave you? It's because you have a season, a time, <laughs> 
and a purpose. Y'all know the story about the talents? Matthew 25. He gave one five, one two, and one one. The master goes away on a long journey. The three men started to do something with what they got. The one with the five, he multiplied his. The one with the two, multiplied his. And the one with the one, buried it. One of the things that they all knew, all three of them knew one thing, that the master is coming back. The problem was they didn't know when. <laughs> Nobody, how many, raise your hand if you know Jesus is coming back. That is one of our hopes in our faith, right? Somebody tell me when it's going to happen. Why I'm standing up here talking to you. If you have not been your battery, you're going to be like, okay, no come now, Lord. <laughs> Don't come yet, Jesus. But those who have been the battery, you like, come, Lord Jesus, I'm waiting on you. Because <laughs> you know you got a time, a season to do that purpose. So it's just, this thing is so much, this thing is so awesome. That's why I tell people, I'm like, listen, if you knew how amazing you were. So when God saved you, gave, uh, gave you his, uh, shed his precious blood for you, he did not do that for junk. So why you are struggling with all your, your addictions and things like that, he was sitting there just looking like, okay, go ahead, hurry up. Yeah, just, okay, you, you, you want to try that again? Okay, go ahead, I'm going to be patient. Because... I, whether you know this or not, while you're down here squiggling like a pig, there's an expiration date right there. So while I'm going to the stuff and trying to soothe my pain with these different things and I'll go to the stuff again, Jesus is still sitting there saying, okay, March 12th at 6 o'clock p.m., that one is leaving. And that person, oh, okay, okay, Lord, I'm, 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 fit, I'm fixing to say yes. I'm fixing, to, I'm fixing to do your will, Lord. Okay, at 6 p.m., they expire. And the person don't have a clue. And they talking about next Friday what they go do. Not even knowing they ain't going to be here. Paul was so connected to the Lord. Paul was like, I am sure that I emptied out everything that I was supposed to be emptying out. This battery, when I pulled open the drawer, this battery looked so happy. <laughs> this battery looked so fulfilled because it did what it was supposed to do during the season. I had a season in my life. I, I used to play basketball. I used to love basketball. I was a basketball fanatic. I mean, we would, me and my brothers, we, we moved a lot. So me and my brothers, we would make basketball hoops out of anything. We would get crates, milk crates, and cut the bottom and, and, and get a tree and nail it up at the tree. And, and we didn't even have, a, have enough money to buy basketball. So we would get rocks and be, throwing. <laughs> we couldn't dribble, but we would have shootouts with, with full rocks. Because I was so hooked on basketball. And then watch this, y'all. All I kept saying is, I'm going to play in the NBA. I'm going to play in the NBA. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to. And guess what, Rob? I started getting 18, 19, 20. Now I'm in my depression. And all of a sudden, something said, your season for wanting to play in the NBA is over. You better shift visions very quickly. <laughs> because my time to do it was done. And you have people right now in their 40s and 50s still trying to do something that expired back in 1990. <laughs> I'm going to put my, I'm going to fit in these pants. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to be that hot mama like I wanted to be. What? It is too late. It's too late. <laughs> be who God called you today. <laughs> I'm going to be that. Mm -mm. It's over. Now, the funny thing about uh, Ecclesiastes 3 is that he says there's a time to be born and there's a time to die. So I'm about to ask y'all a question. I hope this doesn't uh, make anyone feel uncomfortable, but it is a question that us as believers need to ask ourselves. Why do we get sad when people die? Because we don't know where, so who, who said that? Now, 
that answer is the answer is the correct answer. It is it, because everybody here know it's a time to die. So the, you, we don't cry when the apple fall on the ground and die. <laughs> Lord help. <laughs> the thing that makes me sad when people die is, am I going to see you again? Now, when my sister passed away in 2018, I was sad, but I really wasn't sad because I said, I know I'm going to see her again. But then I had some other people die. Now I'm sad. Because <laughs> I know that apple I won't see ever. You see what I'm trying to say? So we get sad because the scripture's clear. There's a time to be born and there's a time to die. So don't be shocked by death. Because it is part of life so we crying at funerals and it is what's so funny this thing is so true you can you go, go to your next funeral you're gonna see how people crying mourning over people and then two hours later they are around fried chicken <laughs> macaroni and cheese and yeah i'm talking about who child listen this friday we <laughs> right yeah <laughs> because the revelation kicked in since we have this truth, oh my God, time is gone. Since we have this truth, Jesus Christ, when he died for us, he needs us to get busy doing what we were called to do. Paul was so clear on his assignment. Paul says, listen, my time of departure is at hand. I did what I was supposed to do in my season. My time is up and I fulfilled my purpose. And my word of encouragement to everybody in here is, you do have an expiration date. Don't look at that as a negative. It was only a negative if you don't know Jesus. If Christ is your Lord, if you have a daily communication with him every day, I promise you. And you're look again, I'm telling you, you're looking at somebody who could not break habits, who could not break things. And what the moment I started knowing I was a battery, I didn't want to go back to those things. It's like, what's the use? Why am I going to you when you is my source? Why am I going to you for comfort when you are my comfort? So it's the revelation of Christ that gives you the strength to say, I don't need this. And that's what the devil has been attacking us with. Don't look at Jesus as your source. Just come in. He's just a good man. Listen, he is your savior. He says, without me, you can do nothing. So everything you're trying to do, you really can't do it unless he's with you. There's a tree out in front of my house, and I'm closing on this. There's a tree out in front of my house I've just been staring and watching. And the thing I love about this branch is that I look at this one branch, and this branch, it looks so healthy. It always got green leaves. So, I mean, the birds be sitting on it. And I'm like, this every year this branch gets great leaves. And then as I'm sitting here looking at how amazing this branch is, I cannot credit the branch. It's who the branch is connected to. So all the good things that's happened in your life, you're just a branch. But watch this. Every branch have to go through seasons. <laughs> So that same branch that was all green, if you look at it now, because of the season, it looks unfruitful. But it looks unfruitful for the next season. So some of y'all about to go into some fruitful seasons. So even though you don't see it right now, you are about to enter a fruitful season. So don't, 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 okay, so what, you don't have money, you may feel like my body is hurting, I'm going through stuff at home, trust me, it's just a season. God is about to turn that thing around. Please stand with me real quick. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.